Before we get started, I did want to say that our hearts go out to the families affected by what just happened in Florida recently. What's up friends, I'm Rick, make sure and like the video, I would really appreciate it, and Cartridge Fund, make sure and leave a comment down below because you, my friend, have won the last contest for our last like spike video, so make sure and do that down below. And now, today, we want to talk about three times in the media where the media attempted to ban video games or slandered video games or was slamming the name of video gamers in general, so let's get straight into that with today's video. <laughs> This one is John Stossen versus Franklin Graham. Now this is on Fox News and John Stossen is defending video games or at least the name of video gamers here. Franklin Graham is the son of Billy Graham, the very well known evangelical. So here Franklin Graham is arguing that media and entertainment was different back in his day. Which may be true, media was different and did not have the realism in media like we do nowadays. But John keeps pushing the fact that although that may be true, there is no proven evidence that gaming overall is harmful to our youth, and this is for the video at least during the time. With that, Franklin keeps pushing that everywhere we go nowadays, violence is involved, and he actually is true. That is a very true statement. But like I said, during the time of this video, John Stoshin pushes back and gives some numbers and facts, at least for the time being, that says that video gaming really wasn't affecting any people at this time. It is sick, and it, it, it's, it's a cocaine. Right, Our entire nation has become addicted whoa, whoa, whoa. to violence you... for entertainment, like the Romans. You talk about all this stuff coming into our homes in the past 30, 40 years, and you're yeah. right, there's much more violence, it's much more horrible. Yeah. But crime is down. Yeah. Youth offenses are down. Maybe it's good for kids. We don't know. John, uh, I would say it's not good for anybody uh, to, to watch murder. These video games to me are, are murder simulators is what they are. And it's very dangerous, John, very dangerous. In Japan, they watch twice as many of these video games. And the murder rate is, is a fraction. You look at crime per 100,000 people. Uh, Ten firearm deaths in the United States, less than one in Japan, and so on. There's just no evidence that, part, that playing the games causes people to run around and shoot people. This next one we have Penn Jillette and the crew of Wendy Williams talking about video games and violence. And here we have the Wendy Williams show saying that a violent media life always leads to an actual violent life in the physical world. Wendy calls out the Call of Duty series as a major problem in households. And once she says this, Penn goes off in a rant. What I really appreciate in this video is Penn Jillette getting passionate and argumentative for video games and making a case here. But he does it in a way that's intellectual and intelligent and he vehemently, vehemently argues for gaming and gamers and throws his hat in the ring as a part of the gamer community and defending us. Okay, yeah, well, but most people have a gun. 350 million Americans, that, there are 310 no, million guns. Right, that doesn't mean that most people have a gun. It doesn't distribute exactly that but, way. But, you know, people, you know that. people you know are that uh, blaming you violence in that. movies and videos Well, that's on insane. This. That's insane. No, really? It's it's not what is it called? Man. Art of War, Man of War? What are the kids Call playing? Uh, Call of Duty. We don't allow that in our house. Really? So Call busy buying Duty. Call of Duty. There needs to be more hugs in households. Those are mutually exclusive. Well, Nothing in Call of Duty says you can't hug your family. Uh, well, you know what? Nothing this says, boy's, this boy's no... favorite game pen was Call of Duty. Yes, and many, and many it's... peaceful people. You're doing the same thing. Um, Call of Duty is the most popular game there is. Everyone's playing it, so of course bad people are going to play it too. Yeah. To try to blame Shakespeare and the violence in Shakespeare and the violence in art uh, for violence that happens in the real world is something that's been tried for years and is always wrong. People must take responsibility. We must stop blaming society well, and actually that. blame the perpetrator. Yeah. The next video features Mike Schneider with Assemblywoman Linda Stender. This this one is unique because this woman has previously in the past attempted to ban video games in general and the sale of video games, but since that didn't work, what she started to do is attempt to ban arcade games, games where you could simply go up to an arcade, pick up a gun, and play at any time. She has an issue with the fact that at arcades you cannot really ban or limit what kids can play because all you have to do is slip in some quarters and you're in. Now we know this attempted ban didn't work because there's arcade games everywhere and we can still play them, thankfully. I thought this video was interesting because because there's no really arguing going on here, it's just a simple discussion. So let me know what you guys think of this. 
My inspiration for this was that a concerned mother called me. She took her kids to the bowling alley on a day off from school. She took her four-year-old or seven-year-old and was shocked to find out that the games are there, they're available. You didn't even have to put money in the machine. And the kids were going up, picking up these guns that look like you know, the, the semi-automatic mm -hmm. weapons mm -hmm. so that they could pretend to be shooting and this scenes were very violent and very sexual. So these are these are like arcade style games like we used arcade to call them. Arcade style yeah. games. That's exactly mm -hmm. right because the uh, this doesn't speak to the issue of purchasing and and using in your own home. So you wouldn't say to a store you can't sell this game. What you're saying is that in public places we don't want to see this anymore. That's exactly right. Uh, I mean I think that parents shouldn't be concerned that if they send their child to a birthday party that they are going to have access to a simulation that isn't what they want for their child. It's just inappropriate for young kids to be put, to be given that access. And here is two more little statements, just simple statements from two political figureheads that you've definitely heard of. I got these clips from Nerd Alert, so thank you so much. But check these out and let me know what you guys think of these statements. We need to treat video games the way we treat tobacco, alcohol, and pornography. Also going on to say, violent video games increase aggressive behavior as much as lead exposure decreases children's IQ scores, she said. All right, this tweet comes from December 17th, 2012. Video game violence and glorification must be stopped. It is creating monsters. I am dying to know all of your thoughts on these topics. These are very sensitive topics. I do know that, and I don't know if there technically is a wrong or a right answer sometimes, I think, to each their own. But I just want to know down in the comments below. So thank you guys so much for watching Superhero Game Squad. Make sure to subscribe, hit the like button. We're here five days a week. Again, you guys, we really do appreciate you. I hope you have an amazing day.